In Flexbox we have flex atoms, which are the direct children of a flex container. We can use these to configure a dynamic and flexible layout. To create a flex container we need to add display flex to the CSS properties of an element. In Flexbox we have a main axis, which is the primary direction our flex items will arrange themselves inside a flex container. Perpendicular to the main axis we have the cross axis. You can change the direction of this axis by adding a property to the flex container called flex direction. By default flex direction is set to row which means that the main axis is left to right and the cross axis is top to bottom. You can change the flex direction to row reverse which arranges our flex items from right to left, column which arranges our flex items top to bottom and column reverse which arranges our flex items from bottom to top. We set the flex direction back to default and open our code editor. To arrange flex items in the main axis, we use justify content, which by default is set to flex start, but can be changed to flex end, center, space between, which gives the flex items even gaps towards other flex items, space around, which gives every flex item even space to the left and right of the flex item and space evenly, which arranges all gaps to be of equal size. To arrange flex items in the cross axis, we use align items. By default, this property is set to stretch, which stretches our flex items when we don't have a set height. In align items, we can choose between flex start, flex end and center. A flex item can be specified to have an alignment of its own. This is done by setting the align self property on a specific flex item. The align self property can have the same values as align items, except for the stretch value. When we start to get a lot of flex items in our design, we might see that flex items overflow the contents of the flex container. This is because the flex wrap property is by default set to no wrap. By changing this to wrap, we get the overflowing flex items on a new row. As we can see, there is some space between the rows that are created from wrapping flex items. We can adjust this using the align content property. By default, it is set to normal, but we can change it to flex start, flex end, center, space between, space around, and space evenly. With align content set to flex start, we can easily see what happens if we try out the gap property which gives us full control of the spacing between the flex items. Flexbox shrinks your flex items to the width value min content. By default, a flex item with no width has the value max content, which lets the content of the flex item decide how wide it will be. The flex items can be adjusted in the main axis direction by a few properties that go directly on the flex item. Flex shrink controls if the flex item is allowed to shrink or not. The default is set to 1, which means it will shrink if there is not enough space. You can turn this off by setting it to 0. With flex grow, we can adjust how much the flex item will grow. If we give it a value above 0, it will grow relatively to other flex items, based on what values we use. The default is 0, which means it will not be growing. Flex basis tells the flex item how much space it should try to take before growing and shrinking. In this case, we've set it to 100 pixels, but we can give it any value like 200 pixels or percentages and so on. Flex is short for these three properties. You can, for example, write flex 100 pixels, one and a zero, which means flex space is 100 pixels, flex grow one and flex shrink zero. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. Thank you, bye.